Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys Magic. This is Hunter and Steven. Say what up, Steven. What up, guys? We are back doing a bigger, badder upgrade addition to the Duskmorn Precon deck, Endless Punishment. That is right. We've already done a $100 video, so if you haven't already seen that video, check the link in the description for that video. It's right there. But this is the bigger edition. It's the $300 edition. But first, Steven, we are doing something a little different than we normally do. This is not a continuation of that 100. You've built a brand new deck, right? Uh, I mean, I'd say pretty much. Uh, I did add a couple of pieces from the 100, but with all the additions, I've basically kind of overhauled the way I wanted to do the 300. Read the comments, kind of wanted to change it up a little bit, and uh, I kind of like it a little bit more. Okay. Well, let's see this new deck with $300 injected into it with some brand new cards. But first, let's talk about this face commander. It's Valgavoth. But if you wanted to see the Lord of Pain as a completely new upgrade, check the link for, in the description for our Patreon because it's over there exclusive on our Patreon. But Steven, tell me, what is Valgavoth in kind of the direction of the deck? Valgavoth is a very mean person. Uh, he's a hero of souls as well. He is two, a black and a red for a 4-4 legendary creature Elder Demon that has flying and ward pay two life. And then whenever an opponent loses life for the first time during each of their turns, put a plus one plus one counter on Valgavoth, Hero of Souls, and draw a card. So obviously the super important thing you have to kind of take into effect here is opponents losing life on their turn. So it's not like just being able to ping them on our turn and kind of gain the value from there. You do have to kind of be a little bit more strategic. All right. I like the uh, endless punishment coming in. So let's, without further ado, before we get into your additions, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hey, what's up, nerds? Today's video is sponsored by our good friends over at Evoke the Art, bespoke token series. If you're looking for another way to upgrade your decks, Evoke the Art's got you covered. Their complete set comes with 50 tokens, 45 of which are double-sided, offering a diverse range of artwork and utility. Head on over to zaximusstudios.etsy.com to pick up yours today. You can find the link in the description. Once again, huge thanks to Evoke the Art. Now let's get back to the video. All right, Shane, thank you for that sponsor update. Uh, Steven, let's get right into these additions. It's $300 time. Talk to me about some of the creatures you're throwing in. Yeah, so I went ahead and added Cemetery Gatekeeper. We'll talk about that first for one in a red. It is a 2-1 creature vampire. It's got first strike. When it ETBs, exile a card from a graveyard. So any graveyard you want to pick from. And it says whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, Cemetery Gatekeeper deals two damage to that player. Uh, obviously, we're playing in a little bit more of a higher tier price-wise, so we might be dealing with some fetches, uh, some stuff like that. So if you can go ahead and exile a land card, obviously we're playing commander, people are playing lands on their turns, and we're going to hopefully get those pings. But obviously we're also playing commander and graveyard recursion kind of sucks, so maybe you want to exile somebody's, you know, win con maybe? Hey, that might do it. Next up, we have Crypt Gas. This is three and a black for a 2-2 creature spirit. It's got Extort, so you can pay a white or a black. If you do, each opponent loses one life, and you gain that much life. Uh, really fun. I do love Extort as a mechanic. But my favorite part about this card is it says, whenever you tap a Swamp for mana, add a black mana to your mana pool. So really just trying to double up on all that mana. I added some lands that you'll see a little bit later that kind of make this go a little bit more nuts. So I'm very excited for this card. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Um extort also a very good mechanic yeah i mean we're in rakdos a lot of the cards in this deck are kind of high cmc and obviously we want to do the most amount on our turn possible so just having that extra mana is definitely gonna be very beneficial mm -hmm. next up let's talk about some big baller cards so we have orcish bowmasters it is a one in a black for a one one creature orc archer it has flash and it says whenever it enters the battlefield and whenever an opponent draws a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps it deals one damage to any target that amass orcs one. So essentially you're getting two bodies for the price of one, which is really fun. Uh, and obviously with us playing that higher tier game, obviously people are drawing a bunch of cards. Hunter, I know you're going to be drawing a bunch of cards. So hopefully yeah. I get to flash an Orgish Bowmasters. Yeah, Orgish Bowmasters is great here. Um, if anybody, <laughs> any opponent draws an extra card besides the one on the draw step, you're probably directing that damage to that player that's drawing or another player if that player already took damage. And then you're just drawn from Valgavoth. 
Yep. And then also what I really love about Orchestra Masters is it's any target. So although we would love to get that trigger from Valgavoth to make sure we're getting that draw and that plus one plus one on him, you could also try and ping some creatures down a little bit. Hopefully get rid of some threats because you never know what's around the corner. Mm -mm. Some pesky stuff out there. Speaking about being pesky, Razor Kid Needlehead's up next. So I do love this card. I added it in the 100 originally, and I think it fits very well in this deck. So I had to keep it for sure. So this is two red for a 2-2 creature human assassin. It says it has first strike during your turn, and then whenever an opponent draws a card, Razor Kid Needlehead deals one damage to them. Simple, to the point, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a quick, easy ping uh, for your opponent. Immediately when they draw a card, you get to draw a card. With Valgavoth yep. on the field. It's fantastic. And speaking about fantastic and perfect, we have Shieldred the Apocalypse. This is two and two black for a four or five legendary creature, Phyrexian Praetor. It has Death Touch, which is always fun to swing in with. And then whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. And then whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. So really trying to hurt our opponents for drawing cards. And then also, I want to gain some life back. Because we get our draw on our turn, obviously, and then if Valgavoth triggers on each of our opponent's turns, we're going to get at least eight life, which is going to be fantastic in every turn cycle. Yep. Uh, Shieldred is just like a bigger version of Razorkin. Just, I know it does two instead of one, and then it's got, it's so good. Yes. I wish it had first strike, man. First strike and death touch. Yeah, it's perfect. It's a lot. And the last creature I'm adding is Zozu the Punisher. So Zozu the Punisher is one and two red for a 2-2 legendary creature Goblin Warrior. And then whenever a land comes into play, Zozu the Punisher deals two damage to that land's controller. Uh, so again, really just trying to help us on our opponent's turns, getting those Valgavoth triggers. Uh, and this deck really just wants to constantly do damage over and over and over again. So many effects to just try and drain your opponents as quickly as possible. So it's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, so far with all these creatures, I'm just seeing a lot of, uh, hey, when you do something on your turn, you're going to get punished for it. And this uh, this is going to hurt. <laughs> mm -hmm. But let's move on to some sorceries. I'm seeing just one. Yes, yeah, so Jessica's Will, uh, classic commander staple here. So two and a red for a sorcery. You can choose one, but if you control your commander, you can choose both modes. First mode here is going to be add a red mana for each card in target opponent's hand. The second mode is exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Yeah, just because Will is just a fantastic way to ramp uh, in any kind of red deck. I think you should always throw it in no matter what. Yeah, just because Will is becoming a staple in red. You should throw it into every red deck, like you said. Moving on, we got some artifacts. Yep, so I did add four artifacts, so we'll talk about these now. So Ankh of Mishra, this is a great artifact for two. Whenever a land comes into play, Ankh of Mishra deals two damage to that land's controller. So very similar to Zozu the Punisher, uh, except this is a little harder to get rid of. Uh, I love this card. I think it's fantastic. Obviously, we are trying to hurt our opponents, just like you said, Hunter, for just playing the game. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not looking forward to playing this in our $300 battle. Let me tell you, I'm going to be getting punished endlessly. Yes, yes, you will. Uh, also added both medallions for our colors. So I added Jet Medallion and Ruby Medallion. They both come down for two mana. Uh, Jet Medallion helps our black spells cost one less, and our Ruby Medallion helps our red spells cost one less. And the last artifact is Shadow Spear, because I'm hoping Valgavoth gets pretty big, but we also have some really fun creatures in here that we can throw a Shadow Spear on as well. This is one mana for a legendary artifact equipment. It says, equip creature gets plus one, plus one. It has trample and lifelink. And then you can also pay one permanence to your opponent's control, lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. It's got equipped cost of two. Uh, so super cool. Uh, kind of gets around any combat tricks, like if somebody's throwing like a heroic intervention, giving their stuff hexproof, uh, or if their stuff is indestructible and you want to get rid of it, because uh, that is very annoying. If I want to play a kill spell, I want to make sure your stuff dies. Yeah, you could just attach this to uh, Zozu, the Punisher, and your damage that that card is doing is now doing lifelink damage. So whenever you're playing lands, you're getting pinged, but you're also gaining that life immediately back. So it's negligent. Exactly. Yeah, uh, Shadow Spear, pretty cool in this deck with all the mechanics. It's a uh, it's, uh, must include, in my opinion. Yes, it is. Moving on to some enchantments. I see a good handful. 
Yeah, I did add eight enchantments. So we'll talk about four at a time. So first one up is Citadel of Pain. This is two and a red for an enchantment. It says at the end of each player's turn, Citadel of Pain deals X damage to that player where X is the number of untapped lands he or she controls. So I know what you're thinking. This is kind of a silly include because your opponents can just tap their lands. That way they don't have to worry about getting any damage dealt to them. But if they're doing that, that also enables you to not have to worry about them holding up any shenanigans for your turn. So if they do want to keep up their lands and get pinged, Dog of Oth will trigger, we'll draw a card, we'll put a plus one, plus one counter on them. If they want to tap everything in response, hell, I'll I'll, I'll let it happen. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, be careful because this might hit you too. So spend all of your mana when you can. Exactly. Next up is Descent into Avernus, two and a red. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, put two Descent counters on Descent into Avernus. Then each player creates X treasure tokens and Descent into Avernus deals X damage to each player where X is the number of Descent counters on Descent into Avernus. There's a lot of times to say Descent into Avernus, I will not lie. But <laughs> Fantastic Card helps us get some treasures. Obviously, we are kind of giving our opponents some treasures too. But we are going to be pinging people down. I know this is on our upkeep, so technically it will not trigger Vagavoth. But still, the name of the game here is to get everybody as low as possible, no matter what. Yeah, get everybody as low as possible. Um, once again, you got to be careful because this is each player. So uh, I like this a lot, though. It's going to be yeah. chaos. Yep, and that is the name of the game. Endless punishment for everybody. Mm -hmm. Even myself. Mm. Next up is Hissing Miasma. This is one and two black. It says, whenever a creature attacks you, its controller loses one life. Simple, to the point. Uh, just don't attack me, and you won't lose life. <laughs> now, granted, one life is pretty, you know, incremental uh, when you think about it. But with all the drain in this deck, it will add up, and it might matter to somebody in the future. It might matter indeed. Uh, Valgavoth on the field, you get to draw cards and grow it. So who knows if they have to be careful when they swing at you because Valgavoth could be one power short of blocking, but if they attack you, it's now an even trade. So Exactly. And then let's just say that they continue to want to attack me. Let's show them no mercy. So no mercy is two and two black. Whenever a creature deals damage to you, destroy it. Just don't swing at me. It's pretty simple. Straight up to the point, destroy it. Bringing back Price of Glory from that original 100, this is two in red. Whenever a player taps a land for mana during another player's turn, destroy that land. Again, just don't don't worry about doing actions on other people's turns. Just do them on your turn. That's all I'm asking. Just do them on your turn. Pyrohemia is joining the squad on this upgrade, so we have two and two red. At the end of turn, if there are no creatures in play, sacrifice Pyrohemia. You pay one red, Pyrohemia deals one damage to each player and each creature. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, this is just a static ability where if you have a red up, you can just continuously ping everybody on the board for one. Uh, also kind of like a pseudo board wipe in a weird way, in a very weird way. If you have enough mana to throw into it, then yeah, you can definitely make this a board wipe, uh, red mana that is, but I do like it for the fact that you can just pay that red on everybody's turn and then just continually to get three, uh, counters on Valgavoth. And draw three cards. Yep, it's fantastic. Next up, we have Roiling Vortex joining again. So one and a red for a, an enchantment. It says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Roiling Vortex deals one damage to them. And then whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast that spell, Roiling Vortex deals five damage to that player. You can also pay one red. Your opponents can't gain life this turn. Uh, obviously, with us being in a higher tier, obviously people are trying to play some stuff for free now. Uh, things like Deadly Rollick or, to, you know, just stuff like that in general. Uh, so we're just trying to hurt them for doing that. If they really want to, they can, but they're going to lose five life. And then lastly, we have Smoke. I have fallen in love with this card recently. It's really fun. Uh, so just trying to slow the game down a little bit and hopefully not make it so people can swing thoroughly at us. Uh, this is two red. Each player can only untap one creature during his or her untap phase. Oh, boy. These enchantments are going to be very, very punishing. I'm going to keep using that word because we are endless punishment. But... Ah, it's going to be bringing the pain for sure. And I'm terrified. Yes. But I also like these inclusions in this deck. And finally, Steven, we 
do touch the mana base just a bit. What are we getting in here? Yep, so I kind of changed the lands a little bit. Um, I did add a few of the ones you saw from the 100, but we'll just talk about everything off the rip. Uh, so Blaze Meyer Verge, uh, I love this card from Dust Morin, so it comes down untapped, which is beautiful. Uh, taps for a black, but if you want to, you can also tap it for a red, only if you control a Swamp or Mountain. Uh, we're in a two-color deck. We're going to be just fine, I promise you, so this is going to be a great include here. Also added the pathway, so we have Blight Step pathway, or we do have Seer Step pathway for a red or a black. Bajuka Bog, because Graveyard Shenanigans, not on my watch, good sirs. Uh, this does enter tapped, which is a little unfortunate, but being able to exile a target player's graveyard is going to be pretty detrimental. And then while we're talking about exiling graveyards, I did also add Scavenger Grounds. Uh, this taps for a colorless, or you can pay to sack it, exile all graveyards. So a little bit of a backup just in case somebody's getting a little bit more hasty on their graveyard after we exile their graveyard before. Uh, these last three cards, I'll talk about two first. So we'll talk about Cabal Coffers. Uh, great include in this kind of deck, I feel like. So pay two, add a black mana for each swamp you control. And obviously, I feel like if you throw Cabal Coffers into your deck, you have to also add Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. So legendary land here. Each land is a swamp in addition to its other types. Uh, so let's just make a ton of mana. Uh, this is my two favorite card land combo kind of shenanigans going on here. And then lastly, I just threw in Luxury Suite, the Bond land. Obviously, we're playing Commander. We should have two or more opponents. If we're doing our job right, maybe we won't. You don't know. Maybe we won't. You never know. But, Steven, is that going to do it? Is that all of the additions to this $300 build of Endless Punishment? Those are all the additions, Hunter. All right. Well, it's time to cut out some cards to make room for all of those. So let's kick us off with some creatures first up. Yeah, so Hunter, just like you said, obviously when you make additions, you have to cut cards. I'm not terribly thrilled about cutting cards, but... We're playing Commander. It's a singleton format. You have to have 100 cards that are different names, other than the lands, obviously. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. So Barb Fire Gremlin, um, three and a red, three, two creature Gremlin. It's got first strike haste. It says whenever a player taps a land for mana, if this card is tapped, that player adds one mana of any type that land produced. Then that land deals one damage to that player. Uh, this card is cool, and I like the fact that it has first strike and haste, but when you play it it comes down for four so you've already wasted four mana you're attacking with it it's a three two so it could easily be blocked but most of the time people aren't going to block it because they want to be able to tap their lands for more but we added crypt gas we have cabal coffers and herborg so we had tons of mana production so i don't want to help my opponents as well so this definitely got a cut here next up is braids arisen nightmare i said it in the 100 cuts i don't understand why this card is in this deck we're not making a ton of tokens. There's really no point for this. I don't want to get rid of my enchantments or lands or, you know, planeswalkers. It just, I don't understand why this card's in this deck. Uh, it is a really cool card, but it just did not make sense in this deck. Falconrath Noble, uh, getting rid of this one. We already have Blood Artists in the deck. So this is three and a black for a 2 2 vampire noble creature. It has flying. It says whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one and you gain one. Uh, I'd rather have Blood Artists for two mana rather than this for four mana uh I, I sure the flying is nice and it's not a zero one but i just just no just bye bye just no these next three i'm getting rid of fear burning alive four and two red for a four four when it enters the battlefield it deals four damage to each opponent uh obviously we care more about dealing the damage on our opponent's turns so i don't really care for this card especially spending six mana the Delirium is nice, but it just didn't make any sense in my mind. Yeah, you're not a Delirium deck either, so it's kind of harder no. to turn on Delirium if you're not doing the thing. Exactly. I mean, if you wanted to go a different route and do like a wheels direction in this deck, which is a pretty fun way to do it as well, uh, you could definitely do that where you're pitching a bunch of stuff into your graveyard or you're like unexpected windfall and stuff like that. But just this kind of style deck and the way it's built, it, it doesn't make any sense. Next up, we have Karavek the Merciless, and I know a lot of people were kind of upset in the comments that I got rid of this, but it doesn't really make too much sense for us right now. It's a very expensive card. It is just, it works really well with the other commander for the, you know, backup side of it. But for our side, I just, I didn't really enjoy it too much. So for seven mana, uh, Karavek is a human shaman. It's a 5-4, and then whenever an opponent casts a spell, 
this deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target. I understand that we can throw Shadow Spear on it, get that lifelink, but it's just, again, seven mana is such a hefty investment. And most of the time, this just puts a giant target on this cart. So I just got rid of it. I also got rid of Massacre Worm. This is three and three black for a six five. When it enters the battlefield, uh, creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. I like it because, you know, I. I know in some of the decks for these pre-cons, and especially I think yours, Hunter, in particular, you got, you're making a bunch of two twos on the ground. I, I don't know. There's enough board wipes in this deck where I didn't want to invest six mana into it. It also says whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. It's cool and it's big, but I like to keep my decks to a low CMC to a certain extent. And with all the things we added, I kind of wanted to be able to do other things other than just give minus two, minus two until end of turn. Yeah, I get why this card's added, because sometimes Wizards of the Coast kind of adds cards into decks based on the other decks that are coming out alongside this deck. So, for example, this is giving minus two, minus two. Like you said, the Jump Scare deck makes two, two manifested creatures. That's probably why this is deck, this card's in here. Otherwise, it's not guaranteed to do anything to anybody's board if you're in just a normal pod. Exactly. All right, we got four more creatures. So first up is Nightshade Harvester. This card does the thing. Uh, so it is a four mana, so three mana and a black for a two, two creature elf shaman. Whenever land enters the battlefield under opponent's control, that player loses one life, put a plus one, plus one counter on nightshade harvester. We have a ton of ping. We have a ton of ping effects in this deck. We added Zozu the Punisher. We added Ankh of Mishra. Uh, I don't really want to have another thing that's four mana granted it does get a little bit bigger and i do like the fact that over a turn cycle it'll get at least plus three uh but you know again it's four mana it just starts off as a two two and we have all those other ping effects so i just got rid of this one star athlete is up next it is one and two red for a three two creature human warrior it has menace and then whenever it attacks choose up to one target non-land permanent its controller may sacrifice it if they don't star athlete deals five damage to that player it also has Blitz for four, which is fun, so you can swing in right away. Uh, but you have to sack it at the beginning of the next end step, which is kind of silly to me. So you really get that one effect. So you're either dealing three damage or five. So I like this card. I think it's got some fun little cutesy mechanic, but at the same time, just in this deck, it doesn't really make sense to me. Tectonic Giant, two and two red. It's a three, four creature elemental giant. And then whenever it attacks or becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, choose one. It deals three damage to each opponent. Or you exile the top two cards of your library, choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. It's pretty cool. I like the fact that you can deal the three damage to each opponent. But again, we're trying to deal damage on their turns, not our turn. Uh, so just chuck this right out. And then the last creature is Vile Smasher the Fierce for one, a black and a red for two, three Goblin Berserker. Uh, whenever you cast your first spell each turn, choose an opponent at random. Uh, Vile Smasher deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to that player or Planeswalker that player controls. Uh, again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but we're trying to deal the damage on our opponent's turns. Uh, although Vile Smasher does come in pretty cheap, just doesn't really need to be in the deck right now. Yeah, I see why you've cut all of these cards out of the deck so far. Uh you've added a lot meaner creatures and there's still a lot of mean creatures in this deck that let me tell you you are dealing endless punishment i am sorry i'm still going on with this joke but it's true i've just seen nothing but damage effects over and over and over and it is going to snowball and just deal yeah. so much damage yeah, I, I, I like the uh, the analogy there. I mean, it really does snowball because it starts off like one damage here, one damage there, um, but it just keeps adding and adding and adding, and it's just it, it, it will hurt somebody over time for sure. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the instance. We saw you added one source for your removing just one instant. What is this? Yep, so I am getting rid of Blood Pact. This is two and a black. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. We already have Sign and Blood. Um, I understand that Blood Pact is an instant, so you can cast it on somebody else's turn. Uh, we did add some effects to where if we're doing things on other people's turns, it may not end well for us. Hmm. Uh, so I didn't want that to kind of target me, so I kind of kept that in mind when I made this cut. Uh, also, I don't want to hold up three mana to 
draw two cards and then lose two life. I'd rather just do it on my turn with the sign in blood. I think that's just a little bit more beneficial in my mind. Yeah, plus your commander has a built in draw engine. So mm -hmm. good. You're good. Moving on to the artifacts. What are we getting out? Yep, so I'm getting rid of Mask of Gristle Brand. This is one and two black to legendary artifact equipment. This is a quick creature has flying and lifelink. Uh, I like that. Dog of Authority has flying, which is fantastic. Um, I just, this card is interesting to me. I do think it's pretty fun. Uh, there's not a ton of life gain in this deck. So Shadow Spear being in the deck for one and then equip cost of one, I think is a little bit better for us rather than having to pay three to equip this. So six mana versus two mana investment. Uh, but Mask of Gristle Brand also says whenever equip creature dies, you may pay X life where X is the power of that creature. If you do draw X cards, we have a ton of draw with our commander already. I just didn't really find a need for Mask of Gristle Brand. Also got rid of Mindstone, uh, two mana. You can tap it for a color, so you can pay one, sack it, draw a card. Like I said earlier, Dogovoth has all those draw triggers already built in. We have some other draw triggers in the stack. Uh, I added Jet Medallion and Ruby Medallion for cost reduction, and there's a ton of other artifacts in here that give us mana, so kind of wanted more colorful mana. So Mindstone got the cut there. And then Seance Board for two. Uh, I think this is actually a really cool card. I really enjoy it. Uh, it does have Morbid at the beginning of each end step. If a creature died this turn, put a soul counter on Seans board, and then you can tap it at X mana of any one color, where X is the number of soul counters on Seans board. Spend this mana only to cast instant and sorceries, demons, and spirit spells. And that's where I lost interest in the card. Um, it's kind of restrictive on what you can do with it, but it is pretty fun, and I think it's a fun mechanic in other decks, just not for this one. Yeah, I wanted to like Sans board as well when I first read it as well. I was like, whoa, you're getting more and more mana. But the floor is, if you don't have any instants, sorceries, demons, or spirit spells, this card does nothing. And that is the nothing. floor. If a card does nothing as its floor, it is not going in my deck. Yep. So I agree with all three of these cuts. Let's move on to three more cuts in the enchantment department. Yeah, first up is Bastion of Remembrance, two and a black. When it enters, you create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. And then whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, you know, kind of going back to your argument about the floor here, I mean, it does do stuff if it, you know, your stuff dies. But if our commander's dying along with it on somebody else's turn and they're casting a board wipe, it doesn't really benefit us because we're not getting a plus one, plus one counters. We're not drawing cards. Uh, so just didn't really care to have it in the deck. So I am getting rid of Enchantress Bane as well. This is one on a red. It says at the beginning of your end step, target enchantment deals damage equal to its mana value to its controller, unless that player sacrifices it. So here's the thing. We have a ton of enchantments for us. I'm not saying that our opponents won't have enchantments, but if there's a chance where this comes down early, we're technically dealing two damage to ourselves every time. Um... So for that reason, I just kind of got rid of it. And then just in case nobody else has enchantments or somebody removes somebody else's stuff and we don't have a target, we do have to target ourselves legally. So I just, I didn't want to have to worry about that. So I just gave it the good old ax there. Yeah, this is a card that I feel like you would keep in your hand and just wait until someone plays an enchantment. And then eventually this card will do something. Because like you said, if you just play this on turn two, you're just going to be dealing damage to yourself for no reason at all. It is target not up to one it is specifically you have to have an enchantment deal damage to a player if this is the only one it's the only target yep and then the last enchantment i'm getting rid of is theater of horrors it's one a black and a red at the beginning of your upkeep exile the top card of your library during your turn if an opponent lost life this turn you may play lands and cast spells from among cards exiled with theater of horrors you can also pay three and a red and have it deal one damage to target opponent or planeswalker uh, I mean, yes, I do like the fact that you can swing and this will trigger at your end step, but having to pay four mana to deal one damage to a target opponent, I you're never going to really do that unless it's end game and you have nothing going on. Yeah, it's a high rate for that for sure. You have so many other ways that are just free pingers. And finally, Steven, we saw you added seven lands. I know how you like to get rid of more. Which lands are we taking out? You know me so well. I did add seven and I got rid of nine. Um, God, thank you for knowing me. I appreciate that. Of course. Uh, but yeah, so I pretty much cut every land that said tapped or tap sack comes in tapped. 
Uh, so I did get rid of Ash Barons. I think in a three hundred dollar deck, this de this card is not really needed. Uh, so got rid of that one. Black Cleave Cliffs. I got rid of. Uh, I I just I I just have a bad time with this card. I feel like every time I have this, I always have more than two lands, so it always comes in tapped. Canyon Slough I got rid of as well. It enters the battlefield tapped. It has cycling. It's gone. Evolving Wilds is gone as well. Taps brings in a land tapped. Geothermal Bog is gone. It comes in tapped. Smoldering Marsh does not come in tapped, but just in case we don't have two basics, it could get a little rocky for us. Uh, one that I kind of got rid of was Spine Rock Knoll. Uh, I understand that we could possibly deal seven damage to somebody with Valgavoth, but since we're just pinging people with just like little ones and twos, uh, I just didn't really want to have to worry about this coming in tapped. The hideaway is cool, but you know, it's gone. Also got rid of Temple of Malice. I don't care about the scry here. And then Terramorphic Expanse. Gone, gone, gone. Gone, gone, gone. All of these lands are gone. What is that going to do, Steven? Is that your entire upgrade to this Endless Punishment? That is going to do it, Hunter. All right. You know the question I'm about to ask. We've given you $300 to go ahead and make this deck as spicy as possible. What is the total amount of money you spent on all these brand new additions into this $300 upgrade? Yeah, well, Hunter, I did uh, get a little too spicy. Uh, so at the time of recording, this deck is about $310. Uh, I'm hoping some of the prices go down, but I feel like an extra 10 bucks here will kind of make your deck hum a little bit more. Uh, so that is my reasoning for going over. Okay, I will accept it. You are a bit of a cheater, but there was that new Razorkin that you added. Maybe that'll come down a little bit, but this is still pre-order prices. So now the question for you steven is how do we feel about valgavoth as a commander and this new deck you've built around it i mean valgavoth's fantastic um i really love the fact that it kind of just wants to hurt your opponents to a certain extent for them playing the game so just being able to add certain cards for that aspect um I, you know i just I, if it didn't have that safety valve i think it'd be insanely broken <laughs> Uh, but I think other than that, I think the deck hums pretty well. The gold fishing in the plane was really fun. Uh, I'm very excited for the 300, and uh, I hope you guys liked all the ads. Yeah, Steven, I'm excited to play that battle as well. It's going to be pretty terrifying to play against this deck because what you put into this new build is very scary, and let me tell you, it's perfect for the Duskmorn environment. We can get spooky up in here. Oh, but. Yeah thou it's up to you guys the viewers hit that like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you're staying up to date with all of the videos we're always putting out you don't want to miss them what are you doing not subscribed like 70 percent of you aren't subscribed click the just click the button go just right there <laughs> while you're down there you can go ahead and leave a comment let us know what you thought of this upgrade did you like these ads did you maybe disagree with the cut always interested to hear guys' opinions in the description, you'll find links to all of our social media accounts. That's TikTok, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, at guys at magic for each one. Follow us on those as well. And also on the screen right now, those are all of our Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your added support. It really does mean the world to us. If you guys wanted to check out what they are seeing, which is not here on YouTube, which includes the backup $300 and $100 of the Lord of Pain. That's right, the other Endless Punishment deck. They're seeing it over on Patreon right now. So check the link in the description for our Patreon and consider subscribing. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Have a guys the magic day.